everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Amy and I am coming to you from Surrey in England. I'm the dyer behind Dandelion and Dogwood Yarns with my sister Jenny and I'm the designer behind Taylor Studio Knitwear Patterns and it is Friday the 20th of January. I thought it was about time that I came back on. The last video I made was New Year's Eve. So I wanted to pop on and show you what I've been up to so far this month, things I've been making, things I've been loving, things I've been reading and just have a little kind of like check in with my New Year's plans and resolutions and let you know how all that's been going. So I did touch on that briefly in my New Year's Eve vlog, uh, but I will flesh out those kind of plans and how I've been getting on with them in today's video. So let's jump straight in with some things I've finished so far this month. So last time you guys saw me, I was wearing this sweater. This is a new design of mine that is now currently with some test knitters. And I originally had knit my sample a tiny bit too short. So just before my previous video, I'd gone in and I'd knit a bit extra in the body and then refinished it. And as I was wearing it, I could see that I'd just gone over the top. And I was, there, I was actually saying on the video, oh, I can't be bothered to, change it again but that's not me at all I always have to go back in <laughs> get things perfect so I did I went in and I took a bit of the extra length out without going back as far as I had started from in the previous version so this is version three of the hem and now it is the exact length that I wanted it to be which basically is kind of just semi covers the waistband of a high-waisted pair of jeans it's based on a sweater worn in only murders in the building hers was red and she had it on with pale pale jeans and a black belt and it just as immediately spoke to me because i wear pale jeans and a black belt constantly and i love the shape of it and i thought what's my equivalent to red pink <laughs> so that's why i knit it in this colorway which is our pyrex colorway which is inspired by my vintage pyrex collection so I've got quite a lot of vintage Pyrex from the 1960s in the pink. I've got a bit in the turquoise as well, but mainly I have the pink, which is a really warm peach leaning pink. So that's where this colour came from. You can see it's it's a tonal yarn and you can see how, I mean, it, everything contrasts way more on the camera. It does not look this variegated in real life at all. I did knit this with helical knitting, so I find that so easy and so fun to do. It really, really does, you know, it makes the yarn variegate really, really evenly and nicely throughout. So anyway, that is that. And it is now with test knitters. So that will be coming out when they are done, when they are done doing their samples. Oh, it's on our Dandelion Dogwood Dreamy DK base, which is a relatively new base. It's a superwash DK merino yarn, but it's, really quite a substantial DK so the gauge you get from knitting it it comes up it's just such a beautiful yarn I really love it it's it's a two ply construction so you've got that it's got an obvious twist in there of the two different strands of yarn it's really really thick and spongy so it does come up more dense knit on the same size needle as our other DK superwash merino this sweater's knit on a 4.5 millimeter needle and this yarn is just absolutely perfect on that so yeah we really love this new base so that was one thing i sort of finished very much the end of it off and then i finished two pairs of well no i didn't i finished two socks not two pairs of socks so this pair um i'd already started the cuff i believe when i saw you last and these are as you can see just a vanilla sock i knit these cuff down they they are with our i can't remember what we call this sock yarn but we don't have it that often we tend to use our high twist sock yarn which is the more popular of our sock yarns this one is finer you can see just how tiny those stitches are coming up it's knit here on two millimeter needles i did a 64 stitch count if i do two millimeter needles then 64 stitches is fine if i do 2.25 millimeter needles then i have to do 60 stitches 
Yeah, I knit these top down. I did 20 rounds of a twisted one by one rib. And then I did a slip stitch, heel flap and gusset. I like to do my gusset decreases every other round because I find that makes the sock more comfortable on my foot around this section here because if you knit, do your decreases every round, so this is the decreases, you can see them there every other round. If you do them every round, they end about here and then your sock goes all the way back down to its smaller stitch count. I find that if I have that tiny bit more here, then it just makes it more comfortable around that section of my foot. I don't know what that means in terms of my feet. I don't know if that means I have a high arch or I'm not really, I'm not really that clued up about feet architecture, <laughs> but I just know that for me, that is more comfortable. So I always do that, even if the pattern, if I'm using a sock pattern and it calls for decreasing every other row on your gusset decreases, I will just change that and do it every, did I just say every other? If it says to do it every row, I do it every other. And then I just did a regular wedge toe, I think you call these. And this is our sock set. So it's Fly Me To The Moon. And this is, it comes with a mini of Pan Am because Fly Me To The Moon was a Pan Am inspired colorway as was Pan Am, the TV show, not Pan Am, the airline. Although obviously the airline is kind of integral to the TV show. Um, so yes, I just absolutely love this. It's supposed to look like the sky basically with um, you know the pretty pinky lilac -y sky with clouds and I absolutely love it and then I found this lilac mini in my stash of mini skeins and I can't remember what it was but I just thought it worked really pretty I had enough of the Pan Am so I could have done that but I just thought it was fun to do this one so then me being me I didn't just immediately cast on the second sock I just find I have more fun with socks if I do one knit some other ones and then come back and do the second ones a bit later when I'm reinvigorated by that particular yarn so I don't see any problem with that so then I knit this sock from some deep stash yarn and it didn't have a ball band it was already caked up and I cannot for the life of me remember what it was but it's really really pretty and I just thought it was very Valentine's Day and especially paired here I paired it with a yarn from our 2020 yarn advent, which was Agatha Christie themed. So it was called uh, Christie for Christmas because she always used to have one of her books come out near Christmas. And quite often they now do a new Agatha Christie film or TV adaptation, don't they, for Christmas? Although they didn't this year. Um, but um, so that one was Third Girl, the colorway from our advent. And we really love this sort of mauvey pink. I think we need to have that as a regular colorway in our shop actually. And this was a colorway from our 2022 advent calendar which was called Sending Christmas Roses and all the yarns were based on different roses. A lot of them were David Austin roses. We grow roses, myself and my sister both grow roses and my mum so we had a lot of our own roses in there and we we do have a bit of a preference for David Austin ones, they're just so gorgeous. Anyway yes this was um, Ingrid Bergman, beautiful just true, true red. As you can see, I've got lots of these little lightning bulb stitch markers clipped to my sock. And that is to mark every 10 rows that I've knit because <clears throat> to make my knitting less stressful, I like to know exact numbers for everything. <clears throat> I don't like comparing and then thinking, oh, it's about the right length and I'll start my heel now. I'd rather just count and know. So I like to do this and know how many rows I've done and then I know when I can start my, in this case, my shadow wrap short row heel because these were a toe up sock. So that's the heel I've done there. Um, and then if I'm doing them cuffed out the same way, but coming from the heel to the toe. So I'll know when to start doing my toe decreases. <clears throat> so it means that my pair of socks are both exactly the same and I don't have to keep trying it on or putting it on a sock ruler because I just know now that if... I'm using 2.25 millimetres, it's X rows. And if I'm using two millimetres, it's X rows. And so, yeah, this length is the new length that I like my socks. I have worked out. I like them quite long, especially now. <laughs> I don't know whether this is just I'm getting more eccentric 
or whether it's because people just seem to be wearing socks more visibly, but I will now just wear these pulled up over my leggings with trainers. I would not have done that a little while ago. Um, and I just find this is a nice length to do that with. <clears throat> so yeah, really love these. I don't know which pair I will do first, as in which I will complete. These aren't as long as I would have liked. I should have made them longer, <clears throat> about a cuff longer again. But never mind. The other thing that I finished was a bag prototype for the shop. I haven't done any project bags in a while, but I felt like what I really wanted to do was some notions pouches, but biggish. So you could put your DPNs in there, measuring tapes, rulers, you know, some stitch markers, progress keepers, even a little notepad and a pen. And so I was just testing out the size and the zip because we recently got some different zips in and this one's in a peach velvet I wasn't sure what to embroider at first I didn't know whether to put knitting or notions or knit or knitter or nothing <laughs> not nothing written on there <laughs> just no embroidery um and then this is a Liberty Tana lawn that I've used here for the frill I just loved these two colorways together I thought they were so nice especially with the slightly more kind of peach mulberry coloured zip. I thought that was such a lovely combination. Um, <clears throat> I have found this zip really, really nice. I wasn't sure about how fun it would be working with the metal zip, <clears throat> doing like the zip ends and stuff, but I had no trouble at all. It was really, really nice. And then I've just lined it there with a rival paper company that I had some of as well, which is again, just a really, really beautiful, like Nigella blue, so pretty. So yeah, and then just to put a little bit of velvet ribbon on the on the handle. This would also be really good for clipping. Um, like you could clip some of these on there just to have them to hand. But yeah, so anyway, that was a prototype. So this one is going to be for me. I was just sort of testing out size and construction and stuff. And so the actual ones probably won't be this exact fabric combination because I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get any more of this particular Liberty fabric any because it was from a dress that I made in the summer but I've got so many fun fabric combinations in mind so <clears throat> they will be coming to the shop over the next couple of months. I have spun you around a little bit so I can show you something else that I have recently finished although I haven't finished it completely I've just finished the patchwork element the top of this quilt. started this a long time ago well yeah, quite a while ago. And it was sitting sort of almost complete. And then this week I pulled it out and spent about a day and a half just getting the top of this all put together. I've put it here over a white throw because it gives me a much better impression of how it will actually look when it's quilted. Patchwork quilts just, they are transformed when they quilted and backed and especially then when they are washed. So I just taught you a little bit about some of the fabrics in here. This is actually a really simple block to construct and it's quite a nice one as well. I mean I haven't really taken advantage of it that much with, with these fabrics but it is a really nice one to do if you've got a fabric with a slightly larger scale print that you want to show off and not cut up too much. Um, as you can see, so here, this is an amazing one from Heather Ross, who's one of my, probably my most favorite print designer, actually. She designs the most quirky, conversational kind of fun. They've got a childlike kind of whimsy to them. This is another of hers. These are paper fortune tellers or whirly birds. And obviously there, that's a little mermaid, but the colours and the kind of sketchiness of her prints, I just absolutely love them. There are some others by her in here. Oh yeah, these wading birds in the bright poppy green. I adore that colour. Um, and then in here also, there is some Cotton and Steel, who are the fabric company that print some Rifle Paper Company prints on fabric, but these aren't Rifle Paper Company. It was... Oh, these are both from it. It was a collection called Paper Cut, and so it's got these little paper dolls, which is amazing. It's got that in two colorways. Oh, the other colorway is incredible. It's got that inky blue and then the poppy pink. And I used to make these with my mum, and actually, it's quite funny. 
my mum gave Jack um, a book called The Paper Dolls and Jan and I cannot read it without tearing up, like proper, like we cannot get through it. Our voice goes, it's just so, it is so moving. I mean, it just sounds ridiculous for a children's book. We did kind of joke that I, I shouldn't put this fabric in the quilt because it was triggering. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I really recommend the book. I think it is absolutely beautiful and it's just so poignant and about the kind of passing of time and losing things as we go along in life. It's just such a, such a beautiful book, but um, just have some tissues to hand. Oh, this is another one from that collection. These really cute little stars and some of them have little faces. Then there are some Liberties in here, of course, because I love Liberty. That one there is Betsy in those beautiful sea greens. We got, that's another Liberty, that lovely gold. I do struggle, I was saying this to my friend the other day, I struggle a little bit to put Liberty Tana Lawn with other cottons, especially other patchwork cottons, because as you can see, the Liberty, oh my goodness, this Liberty, I've got a blouse that I made in this. I absolutely adore that. I think that print is so gorgeous, but they, it was just one of their seasonal ones and I could never get any more of it. After I'd made the top, I realised I desperately wanted more of it to make a dress, but I could never find any. But yeah, so the Liberty are so fine. The fabric itself, the, the weave of the fabric, the strands of cotton within it is so fine. And also the prints are so detailed and, you know, again, fine, if that's the right word. I feel like they can make other fabrics look a little bit kind of crude in comparison, which the whole thing of quilts is, it's sort of the way the fabrics play together. It's not meant to, you know, necessarily all match or all be the same or anything. I mean, the history behind them was very far from that. So. I know that once it's finished, that is not an issue. It's just that when you see them next to each other, sometimes you can feel a bit like they clash. I've just got to answer the door. Funnily enough, that was actually the wadding arriving for the quilt I was just showing you, which I wasn't expecting today. So that was nice, although I don't have the backing fabric, so I can't do it until that arrives anyway. This is what I'm working on currently. It is the next design that will be coming out from me, and it is a fisherman's rib cardigan. <laughs> with a little bit of a history to it. So this one here, I am knitting. I'm so in love with this. I'm so in love with this, which is obviously true because this is edition number five, <laughs> which I will get to. This one here is knit using a strand of our alpaca silk cashmere and a strand of our Suri brushed alpaca, which is what makes it so fluffy in our Pyrex colorway again, because I'm slightly obsessed. Um, so yes, that's where I'm up to so far. I've also written the majority of the pattern now. Where this actually began was, uh, I think this was like 2019. It was a long time ago. This has been accidentally boiled since knitting it and then wearing it a lot. This was knit in Drops Air, which is a beautiful, lovely yarn, which is not superwash. So I think this, this is so unlike me. I, I don't really understand how this has happened. Somehow this has gone on the wrong cycle in the washing machine and now it is incredibly odd and matted and kind of warped looking and unwearable. But I kept it as a, um, well, I don't know what. Maybe I can make a, a dog cushion or something out of it. I'm certainly going to take the buttons off. But it began as this. So it's the Maybury card again, it's going to be called. And um, it was going to have these, the fisherman's rib body and then these lace sleeves. Um, this version, the raglan seam is just a very kind of non-existent line. Whereas on my new version, raglan seam is much more dominant down here. And the way I've done the increases is very different. These are what the new increases look like. So they actually create an interest and a, it, it makes me think of, of the veins on a leaf and the way the increases look on this version. Whereas on this version, the new fisherman rib just stitches just kind of appear as if from nowhere. Same is true where they appear on the neck. And I just, 
I liked using that visual interest as a design feature. So that's one of the things that changed. So yes, I knit this one first. This was Aran weight because that's what Drops Air is. I knit it on five millimeter needles. And the thing about Drops Air, which I guess is how it gets its name, is it doesn't weigh anything. So it's basically, it's very uh, full and floofy, but it doesn't have any weight to it. So then I decided it would be super fun to knit another one using single skeins of sock yarn from my stash. So I was held, holding two skeins of sock yarn together on a five millimeter needle to create that same weight, kind of created this really cool mild effect. Uh, my sister knit the same thing, I sent her over what I was doing. It was still exactly the same pattern as that one, but it was at this point, I mean, I love this. I use this a lot. It's fun. It's, you know, it was so fun to knit. But it was at this point that certain things came to light about the pattern that I wasn't 100% convinced by. I didn't really like it being on the five millimeter needles. I felt they were a little bit too chunky. I wanted to go down a size to make it a DK knit. And this is quite heavy because it's not in drops there. So it also highlighted that I wasn't 100% happy with the front button band. I wanted to do something to change that slightly. And I also wanted to use fisherman's rib increases to create that area of interest on the fisherman's rib panels. So that was my next stage. So then I knit one because I knew I also wanted to do one where the sleeves weren't lace because I was finding that when I was wearing that my body was really really warm because fisherman's rib is insanely warm, far more warm than a regular knitted sweater um, just because it's so lofty it traps so much air. I mean it's just amazing. So I wanted one that was fully fisherman's rib with no lace because the contrast of the warmth on your body with the lace sleeves wasn't always what I wanted. Sometimes I just wanted to be completely warm all over. So I decided to knit this one. This is still on five millimeter needles. It's with Wool and the Gang Feeling Good yarn. And I mean, this is very similar to Drops Air. It's, I would say slightly higher quality. It only looks higher quality compared to that one now because this one has not been boiled. I did the new button band that I wanted to do, although there was then after this one more tweak I wanted to make to that. I did the new fisherman's rib increase style. So you got this leaf vein interest, prominent raglan seams just to make most of that detail. Still felt this was, I think it was actually after this one that I really, really finally worked out. I really wanted, even if there was going to be an Aran weight version, I wanted there also to be a slightly lighter weight DK version because I knew it would still be insanely warm, but it would just be less of a chunky sort of statement knit. So I then went on to start the DK version with the lace sleeves, but using the fisherman's rib increases that create the visual interest on the fisherman's rib section. And I mean, I love how this looks. <clears throat> I also had made that, that final tweak to the front button band. But then there were actually changes I wanted to make with this. Plus, as I was writing this up, because I hadn't actually, I'd only written them up for my own sizes until this point. When I started writing this one up, it, I realized that because of the way I like to do my knitting patterns, where everything is completely spelled out in terms of no calculations need to be done whatsoever by the knitter because I want to have done those for you so that it's just a really relaxing straightforward knitting experience but I also don't want my patterns to be a novel so you kind of have to strike that balance between including all the information without it becoming really long-winded and really off-putting and I grade my patterns generally speaking to 10 sometimes to nine sizes that's a lot of instructions to have condensed and be really really concise and to the point the way that this lace was appearing from a raglan meant that I was going to have because I like to have for any patterns of mine that include lace or a texture such as this one I like to both chart that out I'm very much a visual person I far prefer working from a knitting chart but I know that some people feel wildly differently to that and really only want to work from written instructions so I include both in my patterns but because of the way that this was going to be <clears throat> graded it's really getting long-winded isn't it this cardigan story 
I was going to end up with basically just for this section before you split from body and sleeve there was going to be 10 different charts which meant an equivalent 10 different written instructions just for this top section of the sleeve <laughs> and I was like that's just not that's not my pattern's going to be like a wodge for people to print out and it, it becomes way too cumbersome you know you you can get away with having so many charts but that just for that top section of sleeve was just ridiculous so I basically came to the conclusion that if I wanted to combine fisherman's rib with this lace pattern which I would like to do I do love the way they look together it was not going to be with a raglan construction so then I went back to okay let's just go with completely fisherman's rib for this because as I already said there was that discrepancy between the warmth of the body and the sleeves anyway and fine so that is when I ended up on this one and I've now completely figured out exactly how I want to do the button band which is this strip here and I'm super happy with the increases I far prefer the weight of this again it feels weightless which is really what I wanted I mean the difference between this and this one in terms of I know this is not complete but it, you can this is never going to weigh much and you can just feel it so super super happy with this I can't really show you properly how it's going to sit because <clears throat> it's on a needle that's too short and I don't want to lose a load of stitches off the other end but you can see the sort of how the raglan and it's a, it's obviously a v-neck how that's how that's gonna how that's gonna be really enjoying writing up the pattern finally after all these various renditions of it so that's what I'm working on and as soon as the pattern is fully written up there will be a testing call I feel like I need to change how I'm doing my testing calls because Instagram is just not a good platform for it direct messages and Instagram are a little bit of a nightmare I think I'm gonna have to start using my blog maybe or Ravelry but I know not everyone's on Ravelry yeah I don't know but one way or another there'll be a testing call coming up relatively soon for that. Let's talk about submitting plans. So for those of you that have been following me for some while, the Pyrex colorway may seem like a bold color choice for me because I tend to knit with and sew with and surround myself with quite pastel shades like the Kiki Delane sweater I'm wearing now. So yeah, that may seem quite bright. Well, <laughs> Just wait till you see this. This is my next plan. It's our new colorway. I'm just absolutely desperate to knit this. I'm really, really enjoying that cardigan and I'm really enjoying the rhythm of the knitting. I'm really enjoying writing it up. I really want it in my wardrobe, especially for the spring, because I think that oddly, that bright coral pink is gonna go with so many of my spring dresses. It's kind of like a, a neutral. <laughs> But I am so inspired with this that it's kind of like edging me to finish that one. I think I'm like that a lot in general, actually. It tends to be the project one ahead that's really, really inspiring me, even more than the one I'm working on currently. So anyway, this is our new yarn colorway and it is called Daisy Fellows. And I'm gonna tell you why. Over on Instagram, Reshma, who is Hello Lavender Design, had knit a stunning, shocking pink Whitmore cardigan that she'd obviously tagged me in because it's my design and a lot of you do that which is amazing I absolutely love seeing any of my designs knit up I saw this Whitmore cardigan and I was like wow that is unbelievably fun I really want to knit something in that color I need to dye that yarn color and it was very reminiscent of this lipstick that my sister and I both own called Shiap by NARS which is obviously named after Elsa Schiaparelli, but we didn't know particularly why. I didn't really know much about that part of fashion history, why a hot pink like this was her colorway particularly. And we dyed, we got dyed the yarn to be the color we wanted, which was this very blue toned hot pink. I think more than, more than the Whitmore cardigan was. This is a bit more, it's a bit cooler, which I just, and that, but we couldn't think of a name. We didn't want to call it after the lipstick. We were going to call it Pom Pom because my sister has a Lani hat knit in our bend and snap pink with a Pom Pom this color on top. 
and so we were thinking of calling it pom pom but then pom pom to me doesn't necessarily scream hot pink and what so someone at the school gate had said to her hey you could see you a mile off with that hat on and so we were thinking of calling it a mile off but then i don't know we just it, nothing was sitting so anyway i got my book out which is called secret lives of color which is a really really beautiful book and i looked up shocking pink and i found out this really really amazing fun bit of fashion history so i'm just going to read this out to you it won't take too long daisy fellows was a very shocking woman indeed Born in Paris in the dog days of the 19th century, she was the only daughter of a French aristocrat and Isabel Blanche Singer, the sewing machine heiress. In the 1920s and 30s, she was a notorious transatlantic bad girl, dosing her ballet teacher with cocaine, editing the French Harper's Bazaar, carrying on a succession of high profile affairs and throwing parties to which she only invited pairs of mortal enemies. One of her numerous vices was shopping, and it was one of her purchases from Cartier that unleashed this scandalous shade of pink in, onto the world. The bright pink Tête de Bellier, round head, is a 17.47 carat diamond, had once belonged to Russian royalty. Fellows wore it one day when meeting one of her favourite designers, the inventive surrealist couturier Elsa Schiaparelli. It was love at first sight. The colour flashed in front of my eyes, Schiaparelli wrote later. Bright, impossible, impudent, becoming, life-giving, like all the lights and the birds and the fish in the world together. A shocking colour, pure and undiluted. She immediately incorporated it into the packaging for her first perfume, released in 1937. The bottle, designed by the surrealist painter Leonor Finney, was modelled after the voluptuous torso of the actress Mae West and came in a distinctive hot pink case. Its name, of course, was shocking. The colour became something of a touchstone for the designer, cropping up again and again in her collections and even in her own interior decoration. Her granddaughter, the model and actress Marissa Berenson, remembers Schiaparelli's bed being covered with heart-shaped, shocking pink pillows. Age has not dimmed the colour's appeal. In the brash 1980s, Christian Lacroix often paired it with bright red. Most, however, use it only sparingly. A notable exception can be found in the film Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. In 1953, the costume designer, William Travilla, was urgently called to the set. The filmmakers were panicking about its star, Marilyn Monroe, as a nude calendar featuring the actress had just been released and the press were in a slavering uproar. The studio decided her assets needed to be more jealously guarded. I made a very covered dress, Travilla late, later wrote, a very famous pink dress with a big bow in the back. In this outfit, Monroe wears when singing the tune that helps seal her place in Hollywood's firmament, Diamonds are a girl's best friend. No doubt Daisy Fellows, by then a 63 year old, wholeheartedly agreed. So that is why we have named this Daisy Fellows. Because we loved that history about the whole thing so much, and I really enjoyed just learning that little tiny little bit about that one particular shade. And I found it so interesting that this was 1937. Shocking pink. It just was not what was in my head about 1937 in terms of colour at all. So. Yeah, I, I just found, I found it fascinating that that was kind of the real background of it. And I really loved the Marilyn reference. And so we then decided we needed a colorway called Diamonds Are A Girl's Best Friend because this is her dress and this is the diamonds, which is kind of basically Kiki Delane, but <clears throat> made to look more diamond-like with the speckles. So this is a new sock set coming to the shop and I am just so excited to start knitting this up into a pair of socks. I literally cannot wait. We have also got a lot of other yarns coming to the shop. We do have quite a few of our existing Valentine's colours that are coming up now because we're getting to that time of year. One of which I showed you the socks for earlier, which is our Fly Me to the Moon colourway. We have the True Love sock set, which is just... I mean, we have what we call Moron between the two of us, but the actual name is It All Comes Out in Moron. This is a Gilmore Girls inspired yarn. There's just this fabulous bit in it where Rory, um, she, can't, she can't speak properly to boys yet. And she's sort of bemoaning this to Lorelai and Lorelai says to her, well, unfortunately, once your heart's involved, it all comes out in Moron. And we just thought that was fabulous. So that is such a fun yarn. Oh, there's pigeons having a snack on top of the um, lawnmower bin behind me. So yes, we've got a lot of those 
obviously Daisy Fellows will be available to be ordered on all our bases. Oh, I'm so excited. We also have Arsenic now available as a sock set and we thought it would be super fun if it was paired with this lilac because we just love the way those colours look together. Arsenic again is one of our 2020 Agatha Christie advent colours that we've decided to bring to the shop as a standalone colourway and a sock set um, and then we just thought it would be really cute to have it with a speckled mini as well as that lilac and we have Daisy Fellows sock sets which we paired with Pan Am because we just love the way those look together and then a speckle that has the Pan Am and the Daisy both in so that's another sock set and then this is a new colourway called Lusterware, which is based on some of the crockery that I have from mid-century, which has that beautiful pearlescent finish, which is called Lusterware. So it's kind of reflects all different colours, depending on which way you're looking at it. So it's got all these pastel colours and then some fun sprinkles and then an arsenic and a what oh, it's our, our lavender gin colourway, this one, which I suppose you could drink in a to wear glass hopefully not with arsenic in though i think those yarns will probably be in the shop by the time this video goes live along with our old school valentine's colorways like lover's lane lovebird skating at the palace lipstick and lingerie follow the roses that all those ones i should think that would be the case if not they will be coming shortly after you're watching this there is another problem with royal mail this time it's not a strike there's been a cyber attack you probably all know about this so they aren't currently shipping internationally in fact i think they are shipping a few things now but we don't want to risk sending anything with them because we don't want things getting lost i literally received a christmas card the other day <laughs> so that is because of the strikes i i'm not i don't want to i don't want that to happen to yarn going out to in, in international packages so we are going to be using UPS but the way that you calculate shipping for UPS is so different than Royal Mail that it's taking us quite some time to set that all up and so we've done it for the countries we ship to most often if you do go to check out and your country doesn't have a shipping option set up then just please drop us an email and we will prioritize getting your country sorted out but for Every, company, every country in Europe has a different price and all the prices vary depending on the size of the package. So there's an awful lot of calculations to do. So yeah, just drop us an email as you, if yours isn't up there and you're trying to buy some yarn because we can get it sorted out like really quickly. There's one more piece of shop news and that is there is going to be a new yarn club. As those of you who watch my vlog must know, I have various different oracle cards that I pull from and one of the sets was given to me my, by my friend Jules and it's just incredible. I absolutely love Katie Daisy. Her artwork is so fun, it's so colourful, it's so kind of um, bold and cute and lovely. I really, really enjoy it and these oracle cards are incredible let me show you some of the most beautiful ones there's just so many the, the way she plays with color and puts things together is just absolutely beautiful so yes there's going to be a sock yarn club it will be a sock set like this so it will be a main skein and two minis coming to the shop uh same time all this is going live and it's going to be a surprise sock yarn based on whichever card we pull from the deck. And it will have uh, an explanation about the card that it came from and, and the meaning. So yes, very excited for that. We do love doing the clubs. It is super fun, you guys receiving the surprise yarn. This is the first book I read in 2023. One of my goals for the year was to really prioritise reading and prioritise reading really, really good books because I had this conversation with my husband recently. I'd I'd been reading this book and then I said, oh, I finished my book. And I was like, oh, but well, I sort of finished it. I got three chapters from the end and I sort of found out the twist and figured out what was going to really happen. And and then I just kind of thought that would do. Couldn't, I couldn't really face the rest of it. He was like, you stopped three chapters before the end of a book. And I was like, yeah, it was quite good though. It's like, I don't think you liked that book very much. And I was like, 
no, I think I did. It's like, mm, if you really liked a book, there is no way you would stop three chapters before the end. You need to change what you're reading. And I was like, hmm, okay. So why don't you focus on reading really good books rather than ones that kind of appeal to you on a theme or subject base? And I was like, okay, I'll give that a go. <laughs> so this was number one in that chain. My mum actually gave me this book for Christmas, but it had been recommended to me by various people before that and I knew it came very highly recommended in general so I decided to make this the first book I read this year and oh my goodness I could not put this down so I do have this slightly strange reading habit where I will read some and listen to some so I like to read in the, late in the evenings before I go to sleep um, and I really really enjoy the actual process of reading a paper book. I think it's a nostalgia thing. I just I find it incredibly relaxing and I just love it, but it's not always conducive um, to productivity. And if I'm really hooked on a book, I want to be able to continue with the story whilst knitting because I have to knit a lot, obviously, for my job. And I like to have something going on, whether that's an audiobook, a podcast, that kind of thing. So I will read some chapters and then I will listen to some chapters and then I will read some chapters. I've got an Audible membership so I get the credits and so yeah sometimes I own the paper book and the audiobook which is probably not very kind of economically wise but it means I finish things. Anyway so I was doing that with this and as I was sitting there in the evening I would just be reading it and going oh my goodness out loud oh my goodness it, it is kind of sad very sad in in a lot of ways it's quite traumatic but it's ultimately incredibly powerful and empowering and positive i would say so i would highly recommend this book especially if you enjoy striving against adverse adversity kind of subject and just to look into a different way of life really 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 fascinating so i'm so pleased that my reading has gotten off to such a good start this year however it's kind of quite a hard, high bar to follow and then I moved on to a book that my sister-in-law gave me years and years ago that I'd never got round to reading and I'm already halfway through and it's really good but it's just not the same pace as that and I'm not sitting there going oh my goodness oh my goodness because that's what happens after you've read something you love that much I think everything else is kind of like well this is really good it's very well written and it's obviously brilliantly researched and I'm getting a very good visual here and I really like the main character and I want to know what's going to happen but I really miseducated <laughs> but yeah no this is really really good and I have a funny feeling that a lot of the action is actually going to happen in the second half I just you know sometimes that's the way with a book I feel like the landscape has been laid very very strongly and yeah that's my that's my hunch and I will let you know in my next video if I was correct so yes reading was one of my goals for 2023 one of them was to be far more focused and one way that I've always felt strongly that I would be able to do that is with journaling. I, I find the act of sitting down putting pen to paper very soothing and relaxing but I have never successfully gotten into a journaling habit ever and I've had traditional kind of planners but I kind of get bored with them it doesn't matter how pretty the cover is or how nice the layout is I don't really feel like they provide me with anything more than sticking it in my phone on my calendar and my phone does and I've kind of always had this inkling that if I could just do my own bullet journal and I could have an element of artwork in there, that would be that would be the turning point for me. And I did talk about this a bit during Vlogmas. I have these books called, well, two books. One is called <coughs> Draw Your Day, and then I've got the sequel as well. Absolutely love these. I just think, oh, it's just her her practice is absolutely stunning. But now having sat down and done what I'm doing, I've realized the reason that this never took off for me is because this is a lot of work. <laughs> so I'm doing a weekly spread and having a tiny bit of really, really low key sketching involved. 
like nothing like this level of volume wise that's each day and so of course with all my other creative outlets I'm wanting to read and wanting to knit and wanting to sew and having two children and having two dogs <laughs> that was never going to happen so I don't know it's odd to me that I didn't register that that was a completely ridiculous goal to have <laughs> until I was doing something different but anyway that's that's me all over I suppose so I've landed on something that looks more like this so this is a weekly spread and I did get my watercolors out and add those elements in I've used some stickers I've used some templates I kind of looked at various different bullet journal uh, weekly spreads and it was quite challenging to look at other people's and think what's going to work for me what do I need to include on my weekly spread what's going to help keep me focused keep me working hard what do I want written down each week and then I realized that actually it was probably going to be something that I stumbled across over the course of time as I was doing it more and more just like most things are so I've kind of begun where I am and then I will let it morph in time <clears throat> I'm only really writing about the days of the week or planning the days of the week where I work because it is mainly to for my creative process for my work output this this particular journal I've got a regular planner and my phone for appointments and things like that I've included the days that I work I've included the goals for that week a space for a quote or two depending on what's inspiring me you know if I'm listening to a podcast or a, reading a good book there may be a quote from that that particularly spoke to me just talking a bit about what's inspiring me at that point what I'm grateful for I saw a girl talking about her journal practice and she said that it's really 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 good for her to write down kind of gratitude and, and how she was feeling like a mood tracker because then if she was having a bad spell of a few days instead of get, getting that overwhelming thing where she felt like oh I feel bad so oh I felt bad forever like I always feel like this she could actually look back and have tangible evidence that actually just four days ago she was feeling really good so I thought that was a really good point that is nice to have that record because you know it's good to it's good to have a record of what's been inspiring you and also that you've been feeling inspired for those periods of time when maybe you're not feeling so inspired I also wanted to have a reading record so I have done this based on my actual bookcase in my lounge so I've got my health plants and my little gold oh my goodness I got this gold this metallic handmade watercolor from my husband for Christmas and I absolutely love it I'm obsessed I cannot believe how shiny and amazing it is actually I can show you it's right here behind me it is just this tiny little tin I've only even tried one of the colors CSY art gallery mini tin box which is just in itself absolutely charming um, and they're handmade watercolors and that is the one that I have used so far and these are all various shades of gold but I mean you can get metallic colors every color going they had so many different colors this company absolutely love this and then because i had this then i had a blank page here so i just did this little sketch of some tulips my mum turned up with one day just to have a little record of those and then i've got my next week spread so i've only done two weekly spreads and again i've used a bit of watercolor some stickers some washi tape and again i've got the four days where i work my goals for the week and then a bit about what I've read and a couple of quotes from Educated which I can actually read and it won't give anything away the quotes I've pulled out from the book were positive liberty is to take control of one's own mind to be liberated from irrational fears and beliefs none but ourselves can free our minds and oh that just spoke to me so so much yeah so this is my journaling practice and I actually cannot tell you how happy this is making me i wanted to share with you something that i have been using recently that i'm really loving which has come as a bit of a surprise to me so i normally do gel nails myself at home and the last so i hate taking them off <laughs> so i kind of got in the habit of doing it so that i would use the the really thick gel base that. so thick that you can extend your nails with it you can actually use it to create tips which I did do once and I didn't really enjoy so I wasn't using it in that way um, but I was making my nails thick enough that I could just buff off the color coat that I did with 
generally either with the same brand, which was the Semilac Gel or a CND Shellac. I could just buff off the colour coat and change that and I didn't have to completely soak off my whole manicure because I find that bit so boring and I don't like the smell of the stuff that you use and yeah so I was doing that which is basically like doing your own acrylics really at home the, the way that I was doing it I wasn't ever using that electric file on my nail which I always thought was one of the ways that acrylics really destroys your nails but actually now I think mainly the way that your nails get destroyed is just them being coated in that super thick stuff and not being able to breathe for extended periods of time so I got to the point with a set where I was like oh, I'm actually I'm gonna have to soak this whole lot off and begin again because they just over over time that happens same way it does with acrylics and when I did come to do that, I was like, I think I need to give my nails a break because they're feeling a little bit on the thin side. I'm going to just leave this set off and just paint them with some base coat, you know, just some like treatment, uh, regular nail polish and leave them for a bit um, before I do another set of um, shellac. Well, I couldn't survive <laughs> without having colour on my hands for very long at all. I think I made it like two days. And then I was like, oh, do you know what? I'm just going to pull out one of my prehistoric non-UV lamp nail polishes, like old school nail polish, which never stays on me and just pop some on my nails because I'd rather have that, I think, even if it starts chipping off than just bare nails because it was bothering me because I'm so used to them being a pretty colour. And it actually stayed on longer than I kind of was anticipating it. So I picked up a couple of new nail varnishes when I was just in my local supermarket because they sell this brand. This is, they're both by Essie and this is a gel look regular nail polish. And this is just one of their standard regular nail polishes. I've tried both now over the last couple of weeks. Oh my goodness, nail polish has come on since I last used regular. I am enjoying using these so much. Because if you if one does chip, it takes like one second to take it off and redo your nail. I just, I'm really, really loving them. And I'm also really loving having short nails and them being just normal nail thickness. This one is called Model, they've got horrible names actually. This one's called Model Citizen and this one is called Bachelorette Bash. But they're really, really pretty, aren't they? Um... So because I was getting on with them so well, I also decided to invest in some of the things that I used to use back when I did use to use normal nail varnish, which I was kind of actually, to be honest, a little bit surprised still existed, um, which is the Jessica Quick Dry. So this you just drop onto your fingernails after you've painted them. I'm doing it with every coat. If it says to do that. So I'll do it each time I do a different coat. And then the Fenneman Oil, which smells amazing and it's by Jessica as well and this is just really really moisturizing for your cuticles and just good for your nail health in general and actually I should have probably have been using something like this when I was doing the gels but I just wasn't and then because oh yeah the other things I got was the Essie base coat I, I didn't use a base coat initially and then this is called here to stay so I thought I would check out if that makes them even more long lasting and this is the top coat I've been using, which is the gel look. I don't know whether nail varnish has improved, which I, I guess it stands to reason that it would have done, or whether my nail varnish used to, or I used to keep it for ages. There's probably like an expiry on nail varnish in the way there is with other makeup, where it then doesn't last so well on your nails, or whether this brand particularly works for me. Who knows, but I am loving it. So I thought I would share that thank you all so much for watching and i am hoping to film this kind of video every two to three weeks just to show what i've been working on any upcoming plans i have knitting or sewing keep you updated on what i'm reading what i'm journaling things i've been loving at the moment and any other videos that i plan to make will be scattered kind of between i do want to do a workroom or studio tour as I recently rearranged things in here, reorganised things, changed out a couple of bits of my storage furniture and how I'm organising them. So I think that would be really fun. Um, if you have any other suggestions for any different kinds of videos 
or if you would like to see some more like day in the life vloggy type ones like the vlogmas videos then just let me know and I will try to pop those into the schedule as well. I hope you are having a really really good start to 2023 and that if you had any goals or resolutions or plans that you are managing to find time to make those happen and if not then that you are finding the motivation to keep trying and that you're getting some time to make things and create things and do the things you love and i will see you guys very soon